Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about how we handle null values or blank values in XSDs, in XML, when it's not a string, uh, when the type is not a string. Per default, actually, when we, uh, if, if we create a blank or null value, then it's actually treated as a string, and we will actually get an error if we say that this is an integer or, or this is a decimal. So, um, so we want, what we want to do actually is that we have our XML tag right here, blah, 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 some tag right here. And this is of the type decimal. So this is a number, decimal or integer or integer. It, uh, it is just something different from string. Um, then we want uh, uh, nothing here. We just, uh, just want a blank value, nothing here, actually not a space, not, not anything. And then uh, the closing tag right here. How do we do that uh, with with the XSD? Because it's actually not possible if if the type is uh, integer, then we need to have a zero here or, or some other value. Um, so, but uh, yeah, let's get uh, let's get started with it. Let's get right into it as usual. I've created this project here. This is actually a Java project, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to use the Java part. I'm just creating uh, XML files and XSD files. So I just, but I created a new project like this. Then I chose Java and then I tried, pressed next and then I pressed next and finish. And, that, and that's actually it. And then I had this. Then I created this folder here, XSD null. And then I'm going to create now uh, first an XML file, uh, which can call it spaceship.xml. Like this, the first line of, uh, of course is XML version equals to 1.0 encoding. I would like to use my local things character, so I, I, I write UTF-8. And then we have our spacecraft, our spaceship, now we call it spaceship. So this is a spaceship right here, and it has some properties. And one of the properties is actually crew, a number of crew, crew members, crew members. Um, and here we have, uh, let's say we have 10 crew members. And um, then we have some fuel, and the fuel, that's how much fuel we have left in, in some kind of units. And um, yeah, then of course we could also have a name, name for the spaceship, uh, or uh, Falcon or, or something like that, um, like this. And what else do we have? Yeah, the, the, the fuel, that's these amounts, so the fuel is something, dot something here. Um, so this is all fine. Um, but let us attach an XSD to this XML right here. So we're going to create an XSD, spaceship, spaceship, dot XSD. Then I'll show you what the problem is. Again, we always start with the XML header uh, like this, XML version equals 1.0, encoding equals UTF-8, like this. And then we would like to add schema, we would like to create a schema like this and with this standard here from 2001. Good solid standard, there's no, no need to, to change it yet. Um, and in here I would like to have an element and this is my spaceship. Ele oh. I would like to have an element, name equals spaceship. And then the type equals spaceship type. I, like, I prefer to create my uh, XST like this. Also, but there's one thing missing up here. We need to have a target namespace. Um, let us just set that target namespace. Target namespace equals, and then um, that could be HTTP, and then spaceship. It just needs to be UI, UI, uh, UI compliant, and that is exactly what it is right now. I, de I de define a new alias, XML namespace, XML NS, and then I say this is. Uh, SP for the first letter in space and the spaceship and the last letter in spaceship and we set this to the targets uh, target namespace that we actually have right here so that means that now I can actually um, now, now I can actually uh, assign this to a local type in the existing document so I have an element which is equals the spaceship type then I create my spaceship type that is a complex type because it has um, the sub elements so I'm just going to create it like this spaceship spaceship type like this and it's actually all so it has some elements then the elements that was one element with the name uh, now my name actually maybe it's a bad name but uh, that's how it is then we have a type equals string so and then we have some more we had uh, some we had an element fuel and this was a decimal like this then we had uh, crew members, crew members, and that was an integer, integer like this. 
So this is actually um, so this this was actually the, the XST that we would like to apply to this XML right here. And let us just do that XML and us, um, and then we write spaceship again equals, and then this namespace right here. And because it's located in the same folder, I think I don't think I need to add a location to to, to add that uh, the XML instance and then uh, set the location. So we'll just have it like this, and then I'll write sp colon like this. And uh, now uh, let us actually set the crew members to. Uh, we, we actually don't know how many crew members we have yet because the spaceship is just it's just made. Um, we haven't decided how many crew members should uh, be used to operate this uh, spaceship right now. And I would just like to have it an empty value right like this. I would like to uh, to leave a null value. Oh, I get an error. So this is my problem. I cannot just leave this uh, this this blank. If it was a string, let's say that I have not named my spaceship yet. Um, then it's okay, then I can leave it blank, that's a completely valid uh, value. But uh, here we have the crew members in our database, this is actually null right now, we have chosen to use uh, to set it to null. Um, not zero, but null in our database. Of course, if we could, the, the easy solution would be actually just to set it to zero, and then um, that, it, that would be the default value, but in some systems it's not, um, it's not possible uh, actually just to decide some kind of default value. We want to use the null value in some systems. Um, of course, if we can, then we should always have a default value and we should avoid null values if we can. But uh, yeah, as I said, in, in old systems that, um, that I have been running forever, uh, maybe this is not the case and we cannot just change this. Uh, maybe it's a third party system that we're using. Um, so right now we need to give, provide this some XML. And so how should we actually de deal with this? We would actually like to have the value null here and this is an integer. How can we handle this problem here? There are several ways to handle it. One way is actually to just uh, leave out the, the tag totally, just delete the tag. Right now, then we get an error because we, we don't have the, the crew members uh, element uh, is not, is not uh, present. So what we do is we go back to our XSD and then we say that our crew members, actually, we can actually write, uh, uh, there's actually some attributes here uh, that, we, that we're not usually seeing and that is minimum occurs. And usually this is uh, defaulted to one. But we can actually just set this to zero, and then uh, the maximum occurs. Uh, that is uh, that is one as usual. So that means that um, we can actually decide ourselves if we want the, if this tag is uh, is present in our XML. We see right now it's actually valid again our XML. So that means that I can I can have my crew members if I want to, uh, or I can just uh, if I have my crew members, of course I need a value, um, but I can also just. Uh, delete it and leave it out. That's that's okay when I define my XST like this when that minimum occurs zero instead of one, which is a default value, and then one as maximum uh, occurs. And you can see here it's actually gray because uh, one is the default value. That means I could just leave out uh, the maximum occurs part here right here. That is one way to solve it. Another way to solve it. Um, I'll choose the other way to solve it in uh, for the uh, for the fuel decimal because I'm going to upload this code when we are when we're done here. The other way to solve uh, the the null value for fuel, this is a decimal. I have the exact same problem. I can just I cannot uh, I can I need to have some kind of default value uh, like this. Um, actually, I would like this to also to be an integer. Just uh, in my case here, this is also an integer. So uh, we still have the problem here. We cannot uh, we, we cannot provide the, the the null value right here. So the way we can actually handle this is actually by cheating. Instead of actually having an integer, then we can actually create a new type, simple type, and then we can call this uh, fuel type. We can name this fuel type, and then we can uh, put on a restriction, and then we can say the base here is a string. So we actually change the type to a string, yeah, and then we uh, and then we put on. Let me just see what uh, what does the matter here. String like this, so a base equals string. This is my restriction. Um, then I can add a pattern actually. So then I'm adding pattern. This is a regular expression. So that means that I can actually uh, write zero to nine. That is what I want to allow to be allowed to to be typed in here. And then I can say I want from zero to uh, ten digits here. And then uh, I can end my, my restriction. And then I, instead of using an integer, then I actually cheat. And I, it is actually a string now that we're using because we're using the, the fuel type. Uh, I need to have my alias right here. So I have my alias right here. So it's actually fuel type. But that actually means that now 
I can actually leave out the, the value here. I can actually keep it empty because it is actually a string. I just have a restriction that I can only type in numbers here. Right now I'm typing a lot of uh, uh, letters. So let us type some numbers like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. And then a 1. Oh, now I have too many digits. So now the pattern is not uh, fulfilled. So I need to delete one digit right now. So that was the other way of actually uh, dealing with it. Um, there, are, there is actually um, there's an attribute, but I think it's actually quite useless. Um, there's an attribute which is nillable. Um, as I can read on, uh, on the internet and, and in my experience, this is actually, uh, even though this is a true, you cannot use this for anything. You cannot set, uh, you, cannot, you cannot set a, a null value or a nil value here at all. So, um, so yeah, I would not recommend uh, using that. I would actually recommend the leaving out the element totally. That is one, uh, of, that is one possibility. Another possibility is to create your own uh, kind of pseudo type where it's actually a string, and then you set the pattern. A third way, and actually the best way, is actually f to find or to always have default values in um, in the data. So that means that uh, you would actually always have crew members, and then the default value could just be let's say zero, or maybe you could also choose that you have a, a crew member's value of minus one, and that is when it is not, has not been set yet and it has not been decided how many crew members you actually want. Um, but that is uh, that is my opinion. That is, um, yeah, I know that's uh, of course uh, some systems can actually, um, yeah, can can make you, uh, yeah, can make some trouble with uh, with all of these solutions. But they, these are the three uh, options that I um, usually uh, use. Um, Thank you very much. If you like this video, feel free to. Uh, of course, I would appreciate if you if you press the like button and if you subscribe, then you will get more content from me. If you have another way of actually dealing with null values in XML and XST, of course, let just let me know in the comments. Um, yes. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again very soon. Bye bye.